flowchart example, counter. The following flowchart outlines the processes involved when using a counter in a system. This counter will record every time a user clicks a button and increase its count by one for each user click. So this actual count will involve the following steps. Firstly, the count rate needs to be established by the system. And as we've said, we're gonna have a count rate of one. Every time a click happens, it counts as one. Secondly, the user input increases the count. So that is the user click itself. They are giving their input. Every time that happens, the count shall increase. And then thirdly, the count value will be displayed on screen back to the user. So the user gets visual output from the program, seeing how many times they've clicked and seeing that count increase every time they do do that click. So we'll take a look now at the flowchart of how this may look. So we'll start off with our terminator. Okay, and we can see we start off with our begin there. And then our first step is setting the count. Count's gonna start off as zero. So every time we start this program, the count is set as zero and we're working from there. Our next step then is obtaining that user input. And I'm using my input output symbol there to get it. And I'm taking it and recording it as user click. From here then, we need to then say, user click equals one. Now this step's important because while we are looking at a basic count program here, that is uh, just adding one every time we click, in a bigger program, I might decide that user click might equal two or five, or I might have different types of clicks or areas that could mean different values. Okay, so it's important to establish that as a specific value and the potentially I could have many different variables equaling different values there. All right, but essentially we're saying here, user click equals one because we wanted to increase as one with every click. The next step then is where the maths is happening and we're saying count equals count plus user click. So if I go logically in my head, looking down this program so far, count currently equals zero, user click equals one. Thus count plus user click equals right now, zero plus one, okay, which should equal one. That one now is now gonna be displayed because I'm gonna be displaying count. So one will appear on screen. The next step then is a decision. Is there another click in this program? Now, this only happens with one click. So, so far we're one click in. If I click again, this is essentially a post-test repetition. It's gonna take me back to getting that user click and recording it. And then we're gonna cycle through this body of the repetition that I've set up then. So now user click still equals one, Okay, but now count equals one. The loop hasn't taken me back to the first step where count equals zero. It's taking me back to obtaining the user click. So count is still one now. And so when we get to the process of count equals count plus user click, now it's one plus one. Okay, which means count will now be displayed as two upon the, the second cycle of this repetition loop. Okay, then when I loop again, it'll be three, four, five, and it'll keep going up. So that is how the body of this loop works there. All right, but then essentially this program, once I stop clicking, that's pretty much the end of the program. It's just a simple count program, and it's likely gonna be something that's embedded into another program. But I hope this video has given you an understanding of firstly what the logic might look like in a count-based system, but also how a counter is a very important feature included in programs, whether it be in scoring systems in video games or tallying up the prices of products in some sort of a purchasing app, okay? Counts are very important things. So the logic here is something to take note of. And hopefully the flowchart structure here helps you with the understanding of how the mathematics behind the count works when trying to plan out your program.